Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Gotta clear my throat. Hey, hey, any youngers, welcome back to another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. It's me, Jen Glantz, recording from my closet in Brooklyn. You might be thinking, Jen, what are you looking at right now? And I will tell you, my friends, it's not pretty. I'm looking at shoes with gum stuck to the bottom of them. And right beside me, I am leaning on the laundry bin that's filled, 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 filled to the top. Why? Well, the last week I have spent traveling. It's been crazy. I have so many things to share with you. I just got back from a conference in D.C. yesterday where I was the keynote speaker delivering a presentation all about personal branding. And I love the topic so much that we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you some really quick, fast tips to make your personal brand come to life right now. But before that, I want to share a little bit about my trip to Florida. Exactly a week ago today... I was in Florida with my boyfriend, Adam, and we got there really, really early in the morning. I'm talking like we took one of those 5.30 a.m. flights where you land at 8 o'clock. We went straight home to my house, and Adam and I both run our own businesses. We work from home, so even when we're on the road, we don't just land and explore. We land and sit down at our computers and work. So we got to my house in Florida, and we worked from probably like 8 a.m. for the whole day. At around 4 o'clock, I was like, Adam, I'm calling it quits. It's Friday. I've been working hard. I'm going to go take a nap. So I went upstairs to my room, and I napped. I don't know when, but he came in, and he's like, wake up. Let's go do something. And I was like, listen to me right now. I do not care what you do. I don't care where you go. Just don't interrupt my nap ever again. I was real, real, real tough because I don't know about you, but naps to me are special. And if you ever take one of those afternoon naps that you're just so deeply into and then somebody or something wakes you up, it's so freaking annoying. So I basically was like, get out. I went back to sleep. It was beautiful. And he comes back. And I'm like, again, leave me alone. So this time he went outside and he's like, I'm going for a walk. Now, here's the interesting thing about people. If you know somebody so well, you know exactly what to do or say to get on their nerves, but also to motivate them. And my thing that I am just so picky about is I don't like to be left out. I like to be included on every adventure. I like to be just doing everything. So the second he said, I'm going for a walk, I thought, what without me? Like, what if something really cool happens or if there's an adventure or I don't know? And that alone, like the fun FOMO alone got me out of bed. And you're probably like, Jen, why are you telling me this? But just wait, there's something really interesting that happened when I got out of bed. He's like, let's go for a walk on the beach. And there's this spot on the beach that every time he comes to Florida, we go to. It's a routine because it's the beach that I grew up on. And there's one building on the beach where his grandparents used to live. So every time he comes to Florida, which is like every other month, we go there. We sit there. We walk. It's fine. So I was like, okay, fine. Like, it's hot. I don't really want to go. But if I stay home and you go, the FOMO is just going to ruin my day. I get in the car, we go, we park. And as we're walking onto the beach, there's this blanket with shells on it and picture frames and signs. And I think to myself, oh my God, somebody's getting engaged. Like how cool, Adam, we're, we're going to be in on this engagement and how great for that couple. What a beautiful spot. Like it's our spot. Good for them. Well, he grabs me, he walks me toward the spot And probably we're about 10 feet away from it when I realize, oh my God, this is for me. I'm getting engaged. Oh my God. And I started crying. And 
you know, we all have many different cries. There's our happy cry. There's our really, really, really sad cry. And then there's this cry that I hope you experience in your life. And it's a cry that is just the unexpected, oh my God, cry. I can't believe this is happening kind of cry. And the interesting thing about that kind of cry is that you can't stop. But it's not a pretty cry because there was mucus shooting out of my nose and my throat and my eyes turned red and my face turned red and I, I practically couldn't breathe. Like it, if it wasn't the engagement, I would have maybe paused and been like, I need oxygen. But because I was getting engaged, I just tried to keep breathing. And all I remember him saying in the moment was, Jen, it's been an adventure getting here. And then after that, I... You know, he was still talking, but to me it was silence. I was just like 10 feet away in my head watching the situation unfold. I can't remember anything except that he got on the knee, opened the ring box, asked me to marry him, and then to make matters even crazier, after I said yes, all of a sudden a group of people come running out and the group of people is our family. It's my family, which yes, they live sort of local, But his family from New Jersey flew down, surprised us, and was there on the beach for our engagement. And I just lost it again. I mean, it was a double whammy. We had this amazing photographer there who captured the moment, which I'm so grateful for because without it, I I would not have remembered what happened. And it was just, it was wild. And the interesting thing about getting engaged is the second you get engaged, a whole slew of questions start hitting you. So for many years of my life before I met Adam, everyone was like, why are you single? When are you going to find someone? Like those questions were over those questions. Congratulations, Jen. But the new questions we're being asked are ridiculous. Like within two hours of getting engaged, people were asking me where we're getting married, what color my dress is going to be, am I having kids soon, will I be a good mother? Do I like the ring? Did I know this was going to happen? Crazy. And not only that, but people come out of the woodwork to wish you congratulations. And I am so grateful for everyone who wished me congratulations. But there are some people who people who stopped being my friend, like intentionally broke up with me as a friend, reached out to congratulate me. And like people who don't like me, like have feuds with me, reached out and it's cool, it's awesome, but it's so confusing. And just in the moment, I was like, this, no one tells you that when you get engaged, it's a freaking shit show. Like, you have a good minute or 10 minutes of excitement, and then the rest is like pure panic. And Adam has already called me a bridezilla 10 times in the last week, in which today I sat him down and was like, do not call me that, because the only thing I've been asking is like, can we just sit down and talk about a wedding? I haven't even said like anything else, and that got me called a bridezilla. And I'm sorry that this is becoming a therapy session, but it all is to say that planning a wedding or even just post-engagement is a lot, and it's overwhelming, and I'm excited, and I'm also just like, I don't have any answers to any questions, but I've been writing down the weirdest ones because it's fascinating. Like, so many people texted me to congratulate me, and the next question was, you knew, right? And I was like, if I knew I was getting a diamond, you better believe I would have cut that nap short. Like, you better believe I would have brushed my hair and not worn a hat. Like, no, I had absolutely no idea at all. And regardless, like, Interesting question to ask. All right, let's dive into this week's episode. So we're going to talk about personal branding, and it's a word that's constantly thrown around. We hear that we need it. We know that we need it, but no one actually tells you what you actually need. So first, let me tell you why a personal brand is important. You want to have a personal brand because resumes are so out of style, and I don't have any data to prove that to you, but all I could say is, aside from that piece of paper, you have nothing else that represents who you are and what you've done, and that's a shame, and you need to have something. So a personal brand is the art of putting together all of the information that you want. Some people ask about you, Google you, just want to know about you. A package exists. Your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. You all have friends, and if I asked you, hey, tell me a little bit about what one of your friends does, you might look at me and be like, I don't really know except for their job title. And chances are that's what they're saying about you. So we want to change that dialogue. 
The very first thing we want to do when we think of a personal brand is figure out who we are. So my assignment for you this week, and you're probably not going to love this, is can you start to think about some strengths that you have? Like what are 50 strengths, accomplishments, skills? Make that list for yourself. Very few times in our life are we asked what our strengths and our weaknesses are. Usually on an interview when we lie or first date and we get the heck out of there. But I want you to brainstorm that list because it's going to be very powerful for you to look at that list and start to figure out how to position your personal brand. The second thing to do with a personal brand is to think about the things you want to improve on. And these can be anything that you want to change about yourself, about your personal brand, maybe your skill set. For example, you might want to be somebody who you take your personal brand and you do more speaking engagements. If that's the case, you might want to learn public speaking or get better at public speaking. Perhaps you're somebody who wants your personal brand to be that you're some badass entrepreneur. Well, in that case, maybe you want to take some classes in digital marketing or accounting or or just want to learn how to be an entrepreneur so that that can help you elevate your brand. Make a list of about 10 things that you want to improve on. Now the final part of this exercise is figuring out what your superpowers are. And those are strengths on steroids. Like these are the things about you that completely make up who you are. And the interesting thing about our superpowers are these are the things that are a little bit different, a little bit interesting about us. Things that maybe other people we know don't have or aren't. For example, my superpower is that I absolutely love sitting on park benches, talking to strangers and finding out their life story. Now, I say that and some of you are like, God, no way. Like, I would never want to do that. I hate doing that. That's why that's my superpower. I had someone tell me once that their superpower was vacuuming or organizing their fridge by color. And I know you're like, that's weird. How does that matter? But there's little skills we can pull from those superpowers to help define who you are. So step one is get to know you. Now step two is figuring out how to take all that information and positioning it in a way that speaks to people. For as long as you live, the number one question people are going to ask you is what do you do? And that's a question that either you stare blankly at them and you're like, uh, marketing. And they're like, what does that mean? Or you ramble. Know this. Humans have an attention span shorter than goldfish, eight seconds. That, my friends, is how long you have to answer the question, what do you do? So in eight seconds, can you formulate the answer to these things right here? What do you do? Who is it for? And why do you care so much? Answer that in eight seconds. The second thing you can do is create yourself a personal branding statement. Think of that as 30 seconds, three paragraphs. Answering the question of who you are, what you've done, what you're doing now, what's next for you, putting all of that together and that 30 second pitch, that's gonna be your statement for your website, your statement for marketing materials. That should not be verbal. That eight second answer should be verbal because the point of that, that eight second answer is that when you give it to people, they return a question to you that helps you guide what they wanna know about you. You're baiting them with information. Now, once you have that, you want to have a place to display it. So here are some options for your personal brand. One, social media. You have to have some social media accounts for your personal brand. And this could be anything from LinkedIn to Twitter. I wouldn't necessarily do Snapchat. That's probably not professional unless you're in a certain industry. But with these with these social media platforms, you want to be active. You want to use them for networking, but also to showcase some of the interesting things you're working on or articles in your industry. You want to use them with purpose. The other thing you're going to want to do is build a website. That might seem super intimidating, but hello, I'm a poetry major and I've built many websites in my life because there are easy ways to do it. I recommend using something called Wix.com or Squarespace. They're template-based websites. Anybody can build a website on them in less than a day. I promise you that. And they're relatively inexpensive as well. But having that website allows people to search for you, to find you, to reach out to you, to care about you. It's more of like your digital cover letter combined with your resume. It brings your brand to 2019. Now, in addition to that, you might want to have some extension of your personal brand. That could be a blog. It could be a podcast. A huge trend right now are email newsletters, roundups of articles that your audience might care about. 
And another thing to remember with your personal brand is use it in your email signature. You send a lot of emails every day. Like I think I send probably 150 a day and that's 150 people who can now see my personal brand. I use a program called Wise Stamp. I think it's like two bucks a month that like creates a really cool email signature for you with your picture, with links, it's awesome. But you could also do this for free, but your email signature should be part of your personal brand as well. Here are some tips to take back with you. As you're building these lists, as you have questions, come hang out with us And the secret you're not getting in a younger Facebook group. We're working on this right now. Everyone in the group is doing this. Come join us, come ask questions, come be there with us. And my goodness, we had an amazing in-person event last week in New York City. We had like 20 people there. There was pizza. There were guest speakers. Promise you we're going to do this in more cities, but come tell us where you are and where you want these events to be. We're here to listen to you. Two more things. Our book club for the You're Not Getting Any Younger group has chosen a book. It's called The Devil in the White City. It's awesome. Started reading it. We're doing a virtual book club meeting. Come join the group. It's free. Come see what's up. Come join the book club. Even if you want to join it, read it, hang out with us, we're here. And finally, I think by now you know what I'm going to ask. If you have five seconds, take your phone, look at it, scroll all the way down. You're going to see a place on the podcast app to rate the podcast. Give us some stars, hopefully five. Write a review. It means it means so much to us. It allows us to keep this show going for free without any ads. It allows us to book amazing, incredible guests. And also, it just allows more people to find out about the show. Plus, it'll take you under a minute. You know I love it. Until next week, see you later. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.